In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Edexcel's A-Level Maths large data set. And that's all to do with recordings from uh, weather stations, some around the UK and others around the world. Okay, so I'm going to start off with some factual information about what you're told and then a little bit more kind of context and thinking about types of questions that you could get asked. So there are five UK weather stations. Um, so going from the most northerly to the most southerly, uh, you've got Lucas, which is in Scotland. You've got Leeming, which is in North Yorkshire. Uh, Heathrow, which is near London. Uh, Hearn is near Bournemouth in Dorset. And Camborne is in Cornwall. You've then got three overseas uh, weather stations. You've got one in Jacksonville, which is in Florida, so east coast, uh, well, southeast coast of the United States. Uh, you've got Beijing, which is on the east coast of China. And you've then got Perth, which is the only weather station which is in the southern hemisphere, which is on the west coast of Australia. Now, as for the different variables that are recorded, uh, the first is daily maximum temperature, which is recorded in degrees centigrade. Daily total rainfall is measured in millimetres. Daily total sunshine is measured in hours. Then you've got daily maximum relative humidity, which is given as a percentage. Now, um, be aware that mist and fog uh, is occurring if we've got that greater than 95%. So then you've got daily mean wind speed and daily maximum gust. Both of those are measured in knots, where 1kn, where that's knots, uh, is equal to 1.15 miles per hour. And that is also measured on the Beaufort scale. Now, the Beaufort scale, you should be aware of, is a discrete scale of 13 values going from 0 up to 12. OK, so that means uh, you don't have um, a value of 1.5, for example. So you can only take on the value 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, where 0 is registered as calm. Uh, that's under 1 knot uh, for the mean wind speed or maximum gust. And um, it's, if it's up to 12, you're up to hurricane level, which is 64 knots or above. You've then got the daily mean wind direction and the daily maximum gust direction, which are both measured with a bearing and a cardinal direction. So cardinal direction, you'll understand the northwest, east, south, but then you can break that up, of course, into northwest. Uh, then you've got northeast, and you've got uh, southwest, and then you've got southeast. But you can break that up even further into north, northeast and um, north, uh, east, north, east, rather, east, north, east. Um, then you've got uh, uh, east, south, east. You've got south, south, east. You've got um, up here, north, northwest. You've then got west, northwest. Uh, over here, you've got west, southwest, and south, southwest. Okay, so then we've got cloud cover, which is measured in octas. Now, octas, okay, sounds like octagon, doesn't it, right? So um, it is talking about eighths of the sky covered by cloud. Now, there are, this is a discrete scale of nine values. So that's the bit that kind of confuses people. So think of it like a circle, which you've divided into eight sections. OK, so think about shading in this circle. The first option is that I shade in none of it. So zero out of eight. That is your first option. OK, so if I don't shade in anything, then we've got a completely clear sky. So if I shade in one eighth, OK, it's not completely clear. And that would be represented by one on one octa, OK, on the scale from zero to eight. So two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, and eight eighths. Okay, and so there are actually nine values from zero to eight and represented by this um, kind of pie chart effectively. Then you've got visibility, which is measured in decameters, and what you need to remember is that one decameter is equivalent to 10 meters. 
Then you've got pressure, which is measured in hectopascals. And just so you know that one hectopascal is equal to 100 pascals. Now, what you may find is there is some data missing. Um, sometimes you'll see NA, so that just means the reading's not available. And uh, you'll also see that you've got uh, TR, which represents a trace amount. And that uh, is under rainfall. So when you look at um, daily total rainfall, for example, and you see TR, that means it's under 0.05 millimetres. Now, there are two distinct time periods that are considered in the data set. You've got May to October in 1987 and May to October in 2015. Okay. Now, for the majority of these places, okay, what that means is that in terms of seasons, uh, May to June is your end of spring. So May, June is end of spring. Then you've got July to September. So July, August, September. Okay. That's summer. And then you've October, which is the beginning of winter. Now, this is true for um, any of these places that are in the northern hemisphere, okay? Whereas Perth is the odd one out. So Perth has its winter in July to September. So this is in the southern hemisphere. So it's winter is between uh, July to September. OK, so that's a key thing you should take note of. Now, as for context, there's a reason as to why these years were chosen. Um, 1987 in particular, uh, obviously you'll be too young um, to remember this, but in 1987 there was the Great Storm of 1987. So this was uh, in the UK. Um, and that was in October of 1987. Um, that one is particularly famous because it's, it's almost always remembered because of uh, the moment of Michael Fish, who was a weather presenter at the time, uh, predicting that it was going to completely miss us and it was not going to affect uh, the UK at all. And consequently, he got it completely wrong. And that's kind of how he's remembered now, unfortunately. So. Uh, the Great Storm of 1987 would have affected the five UK weather stations okay, that you've got there in October of that year. Um, also in 1987, you also had Hurricane Floyd. That was also in October, um, I think the start of October. Uh, that was one of the uh, Florida hurricanes, and so that would have affected Jacksonville. OK, so Jacksonville would have been affected by Hurricane Floyd and also in 2015 with Hurricane Joaquin. OK, so um, there's a few little bits of context that are kind of worth knowing behind the scenes. OK, so this kind of like and brings together uh, Edexcel's large data set.